Hello people, welcome you all to Mr. Boo. My name is Daniel and I'm here to present to you about Workflow Foundation for ASP.NET developers. Uh, I am MVP in Connected System Developer and I work as technical leader at Tech Results. Today is the first lesson about Windows Workflow Foundation for ASP.NET developers. We will have six lessons about and let's understand the whole program before starting the today's lesson. So the first lesson will be an introduction about Workflow Foundation for ASP.NET developers. The second one, we will develop custom activities using Windows Workflow Foundation. The third one will be about creating a workflow. We will create a state machine workflow and we will use it in our solution. The fourth lesson will be about developing a runtime wrapper class. We will develop a wrapper class in the ASP.NET application. In the last two lessons will be about de developing a page flow solution using Workflow Foundation and ASP.NET. Uh, workflow Foundation is a generic workflow platform so you can use Workflow Foundation to develop Windows services or Windows Forms application or any kind of application you want. So we, what we want to do is understand the difference about developing using Windows Workflow Foundation for ASP.NET. So in the end, in the end, we will have a complete page flow solution using Workflow Foundation. Now let's see our agenda about the first lesson. So first, we will understand about the workflow runtime object. After that, we will understand about manual, manual scheduler service. Uh, then after understanding the scheduler service, we will learn how we create a communication between a workflow and an ASP.NET application. Then we have to learn about two very important activities, the handle external event activity and the call external method activity. So first, the workflow runtime object. The workflow runtime object is required by the host application, not the workflow application. Why? When you create a workflow using Workflow Foundation, you, when you create the workflow in the Visual Studio, you are creating a kind of model. And then when your application wants to use this workflow, you are creating an instance of the workflow. Uh, so that's why the workflow runtime must must be in the host application because the host application tells when uh, it wants to use the workflow and the workflow runtime also controls the services uh, and when I'm talking about services it's important to, underst to understand that I'm not talking about uh, work Windows services or this kind of service I'm talking about workflow services. Those are uh, specific services that were created uh, to Workflow Foundation. For instance, we have the persistent service. With the persistent service, you can store uh, the state of the workflow that is in execution. So you can start in a database, you can start in a XML file or a text file. You can you also have the um, tracking services. With the tracking services you can store track information about your instances or your activities. Then you can monitor your workflows. And it's important there's it's important to understand that we must have just one workflow runtime per application domain. Why? Otherwise you will have two workflow runtimes trying to create workflows, control services, and uh, getting instances. So it's important to have just one workflow runtime per application domain. So we said about the, so the workflow services, and now let's understand about the scheduler service. The scheduler service is responsible for control when uh, when it is, when uh, workflow instance must run. Uh, the scheduler serves the schedules, the instance, and it runs 
when it's allowed and we have two different kind we have two different kinds of scheduler service we have the default scheduler and the manual scheduler it's important to it's important to understand the difference between the full scheduler and manual scheduler so we can choose properly so the default scheduler works like that the thread that creates the workflow when it gets idle then the the full scheduler creates another thread to run the workflow so it will use more than one thread and the manual scheduler is different the manual scheduler was created to run with the minimal number of threads possible so it was created it was created for specific asp.net scenarios because the asp.net don't like uh, applications using many threads from the thread pool so if you have uh, many tr the workflow creating many threads maybe you can get uh, a problem with your thread pool so so but what's the difference when you use the default scheduler the the runtime you will know when the workflow must run but when you use the manual scheduler you must call the method run workflow uh, then you then your workflow can run so that's the problem you must call the run workflow method but it's again it's recommended to use the manual scheduler service when you are in uh, asp.net application so now let's understand about the communication between the workflow and the asp.net application so to create this communication channel must we must have a contract between the workflow and the asp.net application so the workflow uh, will say what is necessary to call methods or events in the asp.net and to do it we have two important activities we have the handle external events activity it's a input communication activity why you create a contract and define an event in the contract and the in the asp.net application you will have to create a workflow service to use this workflow service and this workflow service will implement this contract so in this way when a event is invoked in the asp.net application the handle exter external event activity will note it and can handle the event so a event occurs in the asp.net application and the, and your workflow can handle this event and there is also the call external method activity it's uh, output communication why because it calls a method that is implemented in the asp.net application from the workflow so when you get in this when you start this activity this activity will call a method that is specified in a contract and this method is implemented in the asp.net application so that's how we create uh, the communication between workflow and asp.net and to understand better we will now implement a workflow using the call external method activity and the handle external external events activity 